tried to fill those shoes. He's trying to do it now, Dan, and off to an 0-2 start. He's had a very difficult time. He lost Saran Stacy the first game of the season, and then last week he lost Craig Sanderson, his uh, fine wide receiver. But he's still got Gary Hollingsworth, his quarterback, who was the SEC Player of the Year last year. He's been struggling a little bit as, as of late, though. And Ray Goff is in his second season here in Athens. But as a player and then an assistant coach for eight years under Vince Dooley, he took over the reins of the Georgia program at age 33 last year and still is the third youngest coach in Division I college football. His club off to a one-and-one -one start, but they've had a ton of injuries in this week alone, in fact. David Harkett, the strong safety, is out. Chris Wilson, the free safety. He lost two players to academics and uh, Nor Norman Cowens uh, to a drug charge, uh, and we'll get into some of that later on. But right now, Ray Goff's got to be looking under the hedges to try to find a couple of defensive players. Five key defensive players in this week alone. Ray Goff said he was afraid to get up every morning to <laughs> find out what had gone on overnight. His dogs won by a field goal by Southern Mississippi coming off that crossbar a week ago. The tougher thing for him, too, is he's lost some backup players to injuries as well. Uh, so when you really look at that defense, it's been probably about uh, six players off the defense that have, uh, have gone down this season. Alabama off to an 0-2 start. And dating back to last season, have lost four in a row. Georgia had a string of losses at the end of their season a year ago, including a peach ball loss to Syracuse. They opened their year losing in Baton Rouge to LSU and then survived the scare a week ago to win 18 to 17 over Southern Mississippi. Brad, you get the feeling that both of these clubs are really struggling right now to find themselves and try to find a rhythm and an identity. And uh, I think this game will, will define that for one of these two teams. Greg Talley, who'll start at quarterback today for Georgia, told us with all the adversity this week, it's time to circle the wagons. And you can bet Alabama feels the same way. This is their first road game of the year, and they're hoping just getting away from Tuscaloosa might help the cause. John Casey's going to tee it up for the Georgia Bulldogs, a senior All-American candidate at kicker. Due to a strange quirk in scheduling in the SEC, these teams have met only three times since 1977. They met only twice in the 80s. But today, as we start the 90s, they are set to go between the hedges. Lorenzo Cole, Prince Wembley, and Kevin Lee, the deep trio for the Crimson Tide awaiting John Casey's kick, and here we go in Athens. Mishandled by Wembley at the eight-yard line. Got a little opening across the 25 and works his way to the 28-yard line. That's where the tight offense goes to work under Gary Hollingsworth, SEC Offensive Player of the Year last season. Chris Anderson, a freshman, and Kevin Turner in his backfield. Prince Wembley, we've already seen, and Donnie Finkley start at the wideout spots. Hollingsworth with six interceptions already on the season. His numbers a year ago, very impressive. But he said it has been a struggle at times so far through two weeks. Anderson straight up the middle. Across the 35 to the 37-yard line where Mo Lewis made the stop for Georgia. Up front for Alabama. Schultz the center. The guards, Robinette and Patterson. And the tackles a good pair. Matt Hammond and Terrell Chapman. Steve Buskey gets the start at tight end. We expect to see a lot of Lamont Russell, however, an all-SEC performer last year. Second down, a long two for the dogs. Make it for the tie. Anderson slips and goes down for a loss. in mind, Brad, last night here in Athens, it rained a great deal. It was a real big thunderstorm, so the track might be a little soft today, and you saw Anderson going out. He slipped that time trying to make his cut. It's third down. That rain last night cooled things off a bit. The Tide looking to warm it up on third and three. Alabama from its own 35. College was first throw of the day. Maybe. Hopper to Turner. Willie Jennings got the pressure. 
And what, he, uh, what Gary Hollingsworth tries to do here is just a little underhand deal now. This is a timing pattern. Sets up in the pocket. Can't find anybody right there. Now he starts tapping. Now he tries to flick it out, but they rule that he was uh, in the grass, I guess. Huh? So that'll bring on the Alabama putter. Tank Williamson to kick Chuck Carswell deep for Georgia. Short end over end kick. Carswell's just going to clear out, and Alabama will down it inside the 30-yard line. So the Georgia defense rises up in the first three plays. Over 82,000 here, and they started arriving yesterday, Dan. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, it was a line from here to Atlanta. We welcome those of you that have been watching the Pirates and St. Louis. Greg Talley at the controls for the Georgia Bulldogs. Preston Jones started a week ago. Talley gets the nod today. And he'll go up on top for the first play, and it's incomplete. There's Talley out of Valdosta, Georgia. The quarterback, Larry Ware, and Max Strong at his backfield. Sean Hummings and Damon Evans start at wide receiver. The Dogs lost Arthur Marshall, their top wide receiver, to an injury in week one. Second and ten, Georgia. First man through, Max Strong. Not much. Max Strong, the bullback on the carry. The offensive front. For the Bulldogs, led by that man, Jack Swan, at center. Russell DeFore and William Wynn, the guards. The tackles, Lamont Tellis and Bill Rosenberg. Shannon Mitchell, another true freshman, is the tight end. And so Georgia comes up with a third and long. Third and eight. The Dogs at their own 31-yard line. Cummings in motion. Tally with time. And a first down at the 47 to Damon Evans. Damon Evans on an in route here at about 15. Now he goes down, does the important thing, gets the first down yards, makes a nice reception. Alabama defensively is playing off a little bit, unlike they did last week. They give it a little cushion early on. I think it's probably because they expect Georgia to run a lot more play action like George Hafner, the offensive coordinator of Georgia, told us yesterday he would. He said they used the play action actually to set up the run. Let's see if they go back to the ground on first down. Just inside their own 49. Tally in trouble. Eric Curry, a Georgia native, makes the stop. Robert Stewart's on the nose. Curry, who just made that tackle along with George Thornton. Steve Webb and Spencer Hammond, the stand-up outside linebackers. John Sullins and Derek Oden inside. And that loss all the way back near the 41-yard line, a loss of seven. With a strong run into Alabama territory and a late flag flies in. Derrick Oden made the tackle. Brad, uh, Georgia said that they, the folks at Georgia said they didn't feel like they could line up and just try to blow at, uh, Alabama off the line of scrimmage. They got a clipping penalty. Uh, they felt that they had to, as you said earlier, use play action to set up their run. And so far, they've been able to run up the middle fairly successfully. Now watch the block here by the right tackle. Right there, nice little block outside. A little turnout on a, a draw. All for naught. Clipping, 15-yard penalty on the offense during the run. Replay second down. That was Lamont Tellis, number 77, the right tackle for Georgia. Nice young man. We had an opportunity to chat with him the other day. Said that he wants to work in public relations, maybe for an NFL club or some of the bigger companies down here in Atlanta. That clipping call won't get him any public relations with Ray Goff. <laughs> Second and 21. Strong again this time. Toss sweep. Stacy Harrison upends him as he got to the 44-yard line. Speaking of the secondary for Alabama, George Teague and Efren Thomas are the corners. And Stacy Harrison, who just made that tackle, along with Charles Gardner, fill out the secondary for the Tide. 
So a third down and 14 coming up for Georgia on their initial offensive possession. Three wide receivers set for Greg Talley. In trouble again. Second sack of the day, and again, it's Eric Curry. And maybe that's the difference at the quarterback position for Greg Talley as opposed to Preston Jones. Talley not quite as nimble on his feet, but this is big pressure right here. Rosenberg, number 66 at the top, gets beat. They get beat inside as well, and Talley just can't do anything. You have to have at least three or four seconds to set up in the pocket. That's just not enough. Eric Curry with a big day already. Scott Armstrong into punt for Georgia. Jeff Marshall back deep. Good kick. Marshall back pedals to the 10. And Georgia bringing down in a hurry. A 58-yard punt. 9.53 to go. First quarter here between the hedges. No score between Alabama and Georgia. Back in Athens, Georgia, 9.53 to go, first quarter, no score. Alabama with their second offensive possession. Off play action, Hollinsworth. Completes it for a first down near the 25-yard line. Baseball this afternoon, Cardinals leading the Pirates late. And the Mets and the Cubs tied it to the friendly confines in Chicago. The Mets have had all kinds of problems late in the season. So is this man and early in the season, Gene Stallings. Derek Lassick, his first carry. Let's take a look at the Georgia defense. Donnie Mabe starts on the nose. Willie Jennings and Mike Steele join him on the front. Mo Lewis, a good one, and Dwayne Simmons. Outside linebackers, Corey Evans and Brian Gant inside. And, of course, the dogs have felt the loss of Norman Cowens this week, who would have started on that other side from Mo Lewis. That's a final now. The Cardinals with a win over the Pirates. Second and long, Alabama. Again, wide open out to the 48 yard line. Donnie Finkley pick up of 23. Right, credit Gary Hollingsworth with the play action. Watch this, this is really nice. Now, watch him sit that ball on the hip. Disguise it from the defense. You see the reaction of linebackers. Everybody's up on that line of scrimmage. Now, he's got Finkley out there on the sideline all alone by himself. Hollingsworth really settled down here in the second possession. Well, I think one of the things that they need to do with him is get him back on rhythm passing, three-step, five-step drop, release the ball, read it very quickly, and unload it. First and 10, Alabama at its own 48. Wants to throw a screen. Turner, the fullback, got it down near the 45 of Georgia. Pick up of seven before Dwayne Simmons. Can make the stop and the Georgia secondary. George Wynn and Al Jackson on the corners. And the safeties, Mike Jones and Earl Fouch. They're going to spot it right at the Georgia 45 yard line. Second down and three, Alabama. This is their first move into the Dogs territory. Classic, the single setback this time for the Tide. Got maybe a yard. Willie Jennings there to meet him. Right that time, it looked like Georgia was on a slant. And what you do is when you don't have big physical people up front, you try to do a little movement. And Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator at Georgia, told us that he was going to try to move his people around a little bit so that Alabama offensive line can't knock the line up and knock him into the next county. And size-wise, Georgia just doesn't match up with Alabama's offensive front. Third down and two. Turner is going to be close. 
Georgia defense closed the door on him in a hurry, but they may have to take a look at this one. Ray Goff, a 6-6 six and six season last year, ended with a loss in the Peach Bowl to Syracuse. And Turner got the first down. Michigan. And Nebraska trying to roll big on Minnesota. Virginia doing Ooh, some boy. kind of job in the ACC. Brother. First and 10, Alabama. The Georgia 42-yard line. Collegeworth going deep. Almost picked off. Earl Fouch got his hands on it. Prince Wembley, the intended receiver. Let's go back to something Gene Stallings told us last night about Gary Hollingsworth. He said, the one thing I want him to do now is when he looks downfield and he sees that receiver open, I want him to fire the football in there. Don't float it. That time he put it up a little high, floated it back, even over the secondary. Hollingsworth threw three interceptions against Florida last week, all to Will White. And he was kind of wrapped all week about looking at his intention of his uh, primary receiver all week long. Gene Stallings says, but he's not the reason we're 0-2. This time they keep it on the ground, and Turner, the fullback's got the first down inside the Georgia 30-yard line. 15-yard gallop for the junior. One of the things that concerned Georgia defensively, they said, well, Alabama runs that fullback up the middle, and you saw Turner just go up there, play a little smash mouth football, because Alabama understands one thing, they can run the football very well, and especially against a lighter defense, that's where the weakness is going to be. Well, Turner definitely bettered his per rush average with that one. The pickup all the way down to the Georgia 28 yard line. Ninth play of the drive that started back at the Alabama 11. Again, it's the fullback, and this time Martin Houston rambles all the way to the 15 yard line. And up front right now, Alabama's manhandling Georgia's defensive wall. Well, Brad, we talked a little bit earlier about how defensively uh, you'll see some slants. Now, watch right in the middle of your screen. See the defensive lineman, 96, slant down end? That's where the running back comes from, where he's slanted. Now, what's supposed to happen there is if the defensive end slides, slants in, then that linebacker's got to come out and protect that area. Otherwise, there's a huge void in there, and that's what happened on the play. Another first down, Alabama. At the Dogs, 15-yard line. Is a toss sweep. And a loss on this one. Bryant Gant played it beautifully. Right side of your screen, that's uh, Bryant Gant, number 88. Now watch him string this play out, play off the block by the, uh, the back right there, and then just square up and get that tackle. You teach those linebackers, square up those shoulders and find out where that ball carry is, and that's exactly what Bryant did. No wonder he's an economics major. <laughs> Easy to figure all the angles. He had it right that time. Second down at 14. Ball tucked just inside the Georgia 19-yard line. Classic. Has it to about the 8-yard line. Torrey Evans made the stop for Georgia. I want to show you something inside, Brad. Roger Schultz, the center for Alabama, just had a sensational block. Watch him right here, right in the middle of your screen. Watch his block on the nose guard, uh, Matt. Now, watch him turn his shoulders right there. He neutralizes him on the line of scrimmage. That sets up the hole for perfect running up inside. Nice little cutback in there. Offensively, those are the kinds of things you love to see. Derek Lassick not playing like he's got a bad hamstring. He's running hard. We welcome those of you that have been watching baseball. We welcome you to Athens, Georgia at Sanford Stadium. Between the hedges, Alabama on their second offensive possession. And they've driven all the way to the Bulldog nine-yard line where Gary Hollingsworth didn't like the looks of something and has decided to talk it over with head coach Gene Stallings. 4.54 to go in the first quarter. It was Alabama, their opening drive, three and out, punted away to Georgia. Georgia really 
Dan had some things rolling for them until a clipping penalty backed them up. They used their play action very effectively, but they had to give it up, as you said, because of the penalty situation. Now Alabama on a drive doing the kinds of things that we thought they would do, lining up and playing a little smashed mouth, running the football at Georgia. And an impressive drive it's been for Gene Stallings. Crimson Tide starting back at the 11-yard line. And they've got a third down and four situation now at the Georgia nine. So Hollinsworth, as you see the drive, that's already moved 80 yards and taken five minutes off the clock. Will bring up the tied offense inside the Bulldog 10. Big third down, Alabama. I think he got there. Torrey Evans made the initial contact. And Dwayne Simmons there along with him. In watching the Florida game, that's one thing that the Alabama offensive line had a problem with was getting off, getting to those inside linebackers. And in that situation there, Torrey Evans just simply stepped up to the line of scrimmage and made a nice tough stop. It didn't take long for Gene Stallings to make the decision. Fourth down, a long yard to go, and the tide going to go for the first down here. It's almost two yards they need against the Georgia defense. Up in the air is Turner. I think he got it. We have a flag down at the goal line. The Georgia players indicating it is against Alabama. With this crowd noise might have been the problem. Dead ball foul. Delay of game on the offense. Fourth down. And that obviously changes the situation as Alabama will go for three. I tell you what, Brad, the 25-second clock is hidden behind the hedges almost <laughs> down in the corner of the end zone. That is a tricky move, isn't it? <laughs> Put it low. <laughs> Philip Doyle, maybe the best in the SEC, in for a 29-yard field goal attempt. down the middle for Doyle. So Alabama takes it the length of the field, but they're forced to settle for three, and they're on the board first. Eighty-two thousand here in Athens at Sanford Stadium. Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggets, and Mike Joy with you. Alabama just took it 77 yards in 13 plays. They lead three nothing on Doyle's field goal, and he's set to kick it away. Hastings and Chad Wilson deep for Georgia. Wilson will take it at the 11. And a little opening outside and across the 30. Near the 32-yard line, a flag at the end of that play. That will be a late hit. May have been uh, Willis Bevel who came in there a little late. Dead ball Hitting late with a headgear. First down. Now watch, uh, watch. This is how you're supposed to follow Wedge. Let that block and get up in there. Let him set up a little bit. Then squeeze through wherever you see that little bit of daylight. Now we'll see the penalty coming up here. Just he goes to the ground right there. That's the penalty. It gives Georgia the first down at the 48-yard line. 345 to go first quarter. Alabama by a field goal. Greg Talley had it tipped in the secondary, intended for Sean Hummings. Intended for the tight end, Chris Bloom. Mike Joy, the third man with our broadcast crew, has been tailgating all morning long. Let's find him right now, Mike. <laughs> it's been fun outside the stadium, and it's loud inside. When Ray Goff played here in the 70s, the players would walk down from the dorm into the stadium well before the game and get a good sense of the presence. In the last few years, the students and players have been sequestered out at Madison and just driven in before game time. He's reinstituted the tradition. They walk from the quarter dorm up to Buttsmere Athletic Center. The band and a couple of hundred supporters are there. A lot of noise and some big game presence. But in this stadium, as packed as it is, you can't even hear the band for the Georgia fans. 
Back upstairs. All right, Mike. Great Harrison toast. Hurst got it in Alabama territory at the 48. Great toast that crowd to get your juices going when you come in here and hear all that noise. Last week, for the first time, he can remember they had to stop the game because of the crowd noise. Garrison Hurst again. The freshman, if he got a yard, was lucky. Derek Oden, who's been active already at linebacker for Alabama, made the hit, and the Bulldogs will have to give it up once again. Georgia tried to run the counter OT where you pull the backside guard and tackle. Lead, uh, the guard didn't get his block at the point of attack, and when you don't have, to have that happening for you, that play is going nowhere. It is fourth down and five. Scott Armstrong, who blasted his opening punt, a 58-yarder set to kick it away. This one high and short. Marshall lost the handle on the fair catch, and Georgia has it. Davis will cover this loose ball. Now, we talked to Gene Stones to talk about the problems they've had on special teams. You know, the things that coaches can't do. They can't go out and field punch for you. They can't go out and, and recover fumbles for you. That's been the thing that's been hurting Alabama all season long, the little things on special teams. At the Alabama 12, a golden opportunity for Georgia. Larry Ware. Got it to the 10. And again, Odin in on the hit. Larry Ware scored a couple of touchdowns last week in the come-from-behind win over Southern Mississippi on much the same type of play as that. Second down and eight. Shannon Mitchell is tight end wide open. Lamont Tellis, number 77, the right offensive tackle right there. Had a little problem there. See, it's play action. So right now, you want the ball to be gone. The result was, though, is Greg Talley pulls out there in back and you're doing play action up on the line of scrimmage. You're jamming your man on the line of scrimmage. That quarterback doesn't get rid of that football on a timing situation. He's going to be right back. Uh, he's going to have that defensive line in his face. Talley with one completion. Third down and eight. He'll go down for the third time today, and it's George Thornton, the man who made the previous play, who picks up the sack. So Georgia actually lost a couple yards on this drive. It started at the 12, it stalls at the 14, and John Casey will try to tie it up. AC to attempt a 32-yard field goal. We've got a tie game. John Casey ties it up at three with 53 seconds to go in the first quarter. Be a strange looking scoring drive, minus two yards for Georgia. Well, coming up tomorrow, we've got NFL football for you. Greg and Terry, Leslie and Pat get things underway with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern. And then the Vikings and the Bears have at it. Many of you will see that game. Or Dallas at Washington, Phoenix at New Orleans. The second of our doubleheader, Philadelphia against the Rams, who are finally playing a home game. <laughs> and the Atlanta Falcons in candlestick against San Francisco. Check the local listings for the game and time in your area. That's a doubleheader tomorrow, NFL football on CBS Sports. A lot of people are wondering how long Philadelphia can go without winning a football game. The prospects don't look good for them going against the L.A. Rams. Ray Goff has seen his dogs 
with an opportunity for a touchdown. They had to settle for three. And Casey just blasts that kickoff out the back of the end zone. So Alabama will work from its own 20-yard line. John, John Casey, whose father is a strength and conditioning coach here at Georgia. I was talking with his dad earlier today, and uh, he's telling me about how when John was a youngster, he used to kick all night and keep the neighbors up, kicking <laughs> footballs off of their houses and all the rest of that. Probably one of the best kickers in the country right now. And of course, Georgia's had their share. Kevin Butler and Rex Robinson. First down, Alabama. Lassick trying to stretch it out. The dog's defense is going to drop in for a loss. Penalty markers down on the far side. It was Grace who made the tackle. Let's see what the flag's about. Dick Burleson, our referee today. Dead ball foul. Personal foul on the defense. Late hit. Automatic first down. That's our second late hit of the day. One for each team. It's unfortunate for Georgia because they played this play extremely well, stringing it out to the sideline. See linebackers reacting up, safeties coming up. Everybody taking it all the way to the sideline, and that's how it's supposed to be done defensively. And those players are already on their way to the ground. That's a questionable call, I think. you got to let them get loose and play a little football out there, too. So first down, Alabama at its own 32-yard line. And a big pile right about the line of scrimmage. Wayne Simmons made the tackle. Let's go to Mike. Guys, this field is built in a natural ravine over a creek, so even though we had a lot of rain last night, this field is really quite dry. I don't think anybody should have any trouble with their footing because of a slippery surface. It's all dried out now, about 82 degrees here right now, and the humidity just about the same. All right, Mike, and the hedges. Nice and green after that shower we had overnight. We were, down by, we were down by the hedges yesterday, and you were running from all of those bees. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few of those around here. Clock stopped with six seconds to go in the quarter. And now they start the clock again. Alabama will let it run down as Gary Hollingsworth will have a chance during this break to talk things over with the Alabama coaching staff. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Alabama 3, Georgia 3. We'll return to Sanford Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Back in Athens, Georgia, where the Bulldogs and the Crimson Tide of Alabama deadlocked after one quarter of play. Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggins, Mike Joy with you at Sanford Stadium. So we start the second quarter. Alabama, first down, second down, rather, at its own 32. Hollinsworth to Lamont Russell. That'll be good for a first down, Alabama, out to the 45-yard line. Alabama got on the board first. Doyle with a 29-yard field goal, kept a 77-yard drive. And then Georgia, after recovering the fumbled punt, got a 31-yarder from John Casey. And that's where we stand at three apiece. Alabama, though, with seven first downs in the ballgame. Georgia has but one. Collinsworth's going to give it to Lassick. Out to about the 49-yard line. Right now, let's go to New York and an update on the Mets. <laughs> Guys, Daryl Strawberry's two-run home run capped a six-run fifth inning for the Mets. They now lead 8-2, to two, and Pittsburgh lost today. So if the Mets hang on, they'll cut the lead in the NL East to two and a half games. Now let's go back to Brad Nessler. We're at second down and seven, Alabama. Turner, the fullback, bounces off one tackler, got across the 50 to the 49. Torrey Evans made the initial contact. Gary Hollingsworth at quarterback. Last year, SEC Offensive Player of the Year. And look at the difference a year can make. <laughs> one of the big things is the turnover. That's one of the things that Gene Stallings says he really wants to eliminate. you got to be able to maintain the football in order to win, especially here in the eight, uh, SEC. And the other thing is he said you've got to be able to run the football effectively, something they've been able to do today. Hollingsworth will work from the shotgun on third and a long four. Got it complete. 
Turner loose in the Georgia secondary near the 30-yard line. Ralph Thompson made the hit, but an 18-yard pickup for Turner. I hear that uh, Georgia got caught playing a little zone there, and if, the, if those backs come out of the backfield and come at you as a linebacker, you have got to stay with them. Now, one of the things that Hollingsworth got that time was a little protection up front. See, he didn't have any pressure on him uh, when he got ready to release the football. Inside the 25 to the 24, Chris Anderson, the freshman. Out of Huntsville, Alabama, 5'7", 175. He's done a good majority of the work with Sir Ann Stacy out with the injury. And Alabama has had all the offense so far today. They're doing exactly what the Georgia defensive coaches thought they would do. Straight at your football. Here they come again, same style. Houston, the fullback, going to be short of the first down. And folks, when you hear those pads smacking up in there, that's what we mean about smash mouth football. You just got to line it up and see if you're better than the guy across the line. Break off. Tell us he wanted us to say happy anniversary to his mom and dad for celebrating their 40th anniversary today. Jim Buck and Betty Goff. We wish you a happy anniversary. They're here at the game. They've got a cake ready when this one's over, and it tastes a lot sweeter if Georgia could win. Third down, Alabama. Nice grab. Robert Jones with a first down. One-handed it, took it inside the Georgia 15. And that's the kind of protection Gary Hollingsworth needs. You saw that time he had an opportunity to go down and check down his receivers. Watch his head turn back around to find his second or third receiver right there. And Jones makes a great little stab right there on the football. Hollingsworth, six out of eight for 82 yards. He's really settled down since the opening Alabama possession when he looked a little shaky. At the Georgia 14. To the one. He that's, flew the last three yards. Yeah, that's a little want to. You know, you want to get into the end zone. I'd like to see that. Somebody leaving their feet. Kind of remind you of what Gary Anderson did with the Chargers about five years ago. Now watch this. See, Jones is going to get about five yards from the end zone. He's just going to leave his feet. All right, he's got a lot of want to. I want to get into that end zone and score the touchdown. He got close. Carswell kept him out of it. But can the Georgia defense keep Alabama out of it? First and goal at the one. Two tight end set. Up in the air again. Not quite for Jones. He got close. Good play that time by that defense of Georgia. Now, if you want to see what it looks like from the linebacker position, just check this one out. How would you like to see this coming at you while you're sitting in your living room? John be okay Allen. if you had all those red jerseys up <laughs> I'd like to be in my living room, not out here. <laughs> John Allen made the stop, but it's about two feet closer. Second and goal, Alabama. Touchdown tie. Robert Jones over the top. Touchdown for Alabama. They gave Jones three opportunities, and the third one's the charm. Alabama touchdown. And of course, Alabama went behind Terrell Chapman and Trent Patterson. Terrell Chapman at 301 pounds and Patterson at 271 over on that right side of the offensive line for Alabama. Doyle in for the point after. by a touchdown, 10-3. Let's watch and see what Terrell Chapman, number 70, and Trent Patterson, number 65, do on that right side. They get good movement on the line of scrimmage. They collapse it back about three yards in the end zone, and that doesn't allow those linebackers in secondary to come back on up there. Chapman picks his running back up. Robert Jones with the celebration, and the tide with a touchdown edge. Back in Athens, between the hedges, Alabama with another long drive. This one capped by a touchdown from Robert Jones. They lead the Georgia Bulldogs 10-3, 10-42 to go in the half. With Dan Jiggets and Mike Joy, I'm Brad Nessler. Philip Doyle to kick off for Alabama. Andre Hastings.
Williams, a freshman at the goal line. Hastings all the way out to the 35-yard line. One of the most highly sought-after recruits in the country last year gets the crowd back into it. Here's Red is the number one receiver in the nation coming out of high school. And this is one of the reasons why. Watch this little move that he puts on on the run back. This is, he comes past the, about the 25. Right there, that's the little move. Those are the things that show you that he's a quality receiver as well. Good vision of the field. Knows when to make his move and shake somebody off. Gives Georgia excellent field position. Just outside its own 35-yard line. Hummings in motion. Larry Ware. Ware gets it out near the 40-yard line. Sanford Stadium in Athens. 82,000 plus on hand. Hoping their Georgia Bulldogs can go to 2-1. And, and Gene Stallings and his Crimson Tide of Alabama, the visitors today, still looking for win number one here in 1990. Greg Talley, the starting quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs this afternoon. Faces a second and five. Again, Larry Ware tries the right side. Gonna bring up third down and short. The scoring, Philip Doyle with a 29-yard field goal capped a 77-yard Alabama drive. Georgia recovered a muff punt. John Casey kicked one to tie it at three. And then the end of an 80-yard march in 11 plays. Robert Jones, a one-yard touchdown. And that's where we stand at 10-3. Third down and three. Georgia. Greg Talley. Open is humming. First down, Bulldogs. Sean Hummings more than likely is going to be Greg Talley's favorite target today. Yeah, you know, one of the things that Greg Talley does well, and everybody here at Georgia will tell you that, is the fact that, you know, he has good vision on the field. Now, watch him here. He very calmly looks downfield, knows where his receivers are going, to, are going to be, and makes good decisions. That's one of the things that George Hafner, the offensive coordinator, said he makes great decisions out on the football field, and he moves the chains. Got the chains moved inside. The midfield strike, and Garrison Hurst goes for a couple, maybe three. John Sullins in on the stop. One of the things that those uh, backside tackles and guards have to learn when you run that counter tray like they just did then, when you get to that line of scrimmage and you turn up the field, you hit the first thing that you see that's the opposite colored jersey. You don't run past anybody because if you do, your running back might be going to the hospital. Hurst got a couple at second down and eight. At the Alabama 47. Alabama thinking about a blitz. They back it off. Hurst. First down. To the 35. can't guarantee, but I really thought that Greg Talley might have checked off on this way. He saw the situation developing over there, Brett. You mentioned that Alabama wanted to blitz right there. They bring the outside strong, and Hurst comes right back up on that corner. That's Hurst's best run of the day. 13-yard pickup. There's a good look at the freshman. Talk about highly touted recruits. He's another. Here he comes again. Somehow got away from the Bama defense. To the 28-yard line. I guess it was almost inevitable that the comparison between Garrison Hurst and Herschel Walker would be made. This, is, this young man was a fine athlete coming out of high school, and everybody wanted to make those comparisons. But I think that he's going he's to cut his own trail here at the University of Georgia. Byron Sneed, the man that made the tackle, is down. Stallings, I'm sure, thinking we don't need any more injuries. Right now is Crimson Tide in front of the Georgia Bulldogs. 10-3 with eight minutes to go in the half. Byron Sneed there in the middle of your screen. Apparently all right. I think he just had the wind knocked out of him after tackling Garrison Hurst. Second and four, Georgia. all stacked up. Ball comes loose, but it was blown dead near the 30-yard line. 
Irvin Collier made initial contact. Derek Oden came over to help out. Derek Oden uh, in that defense of Alabama placing Keith McCanson appears to be the same kind of player, you know, very active around the field and making big plays. But you talk to Gene Stallings about this defense, I think that's one thing that causes him to have a smile or two. You know, that up that front of his is extremely good, penetrating, getting across the line of scrimmage. Last time Georgia completed a pass, it was to Hummings. They appear to have a passing situation here. Third down at five. They'll keep it on the ground. Hurt! To the 13. And the kid almost broke that one for the touchdown. 17-yard pickup. What happened, Brad, is you see right here, Odom's up on the line of scrimmage. The linebacker is almost like a, a 46 look. Now watch what happens, because this is where you want to hit the thing. Bend it back over to that side where they're not. And that's exactly what Garrison Hurst did. You get those linebackers up on the line of scrimmage. If you can get them caught up in the action and get a couple of them blocked, you're in great shape. Greg Talley doesn't want to waste an opportunity. He calls a timeout. He'll talk things over with Ray Goff. 6.43 to go in the half. Georgia trying to drive and tie it up. Georgia on the ninth play of this drive, trying to tie things up. They'll keep it on the ground. Pick up of one, maybe two, Max Strong on the carry. Baseball update for you. Cardinals beating Pittsburgh today. And the Mets now, after being tied up, have gone out in front of the Cubs. There's the way it looks right now. Let's try to close the gap. So are the Georgia Bulldogs. Second down and eight, and Greg Talley's going to take another timeout. So Talley's going to come over and talk it over with George Hafner and Ray Goff. 10-3, Alabama with 6.08 to go in the half. Georgia offensive coordinator George Hafner told us one of the problems that Alabama gives them is they disguise the defenses so well. The secondary moves around on the pre-snap look. And now watch right in the middle of your screen. Watch number five. That's Thomas on the Alabama defense. See him moving before the snap. That's what really throws that quarterback off. And that's probably why Tally called the timeout. Second and eight. Georgia. Tally may be checking off again here. Will be a toss sweep. Larry Ware. Ware to the five-yard line. Spencer Hammond made the tackle. When I look at Larry Ware, I think of perseverance of Brad. Here's a guy that played behind Lars Tate, who went on to the NFL. Keith Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> Worley, who's now with the Steelers. I mean, come on, give me a break. Rodney Hampton. Rodney Hampton is a first-round draft choice of the Giants. That's sticking with it. Second leading rusher last year for the Dogs. He's the tailback in the eye, and here he comes on third and one. Scramble in the end zone. They say touchback. Alabama has it, but we have three flags down. Let's wait and see what the penalty markers are about. You'll be able to tell by the reaction of the Bulldogs. Goff looking for a break. Gene Stallings looking for a win. Here's the call. You had illegal substitution. You had too many men on the field. They didn't participate. The defense. There's the break. No call. We talked to Gene Stallings about having these kinds of penalties happen. So you have young people sometimes, they don't communicate to the other folks what's supposed to happen out there. 12 men on the field, ball fumbled up. Alabama recovers the football, could have had it on their 20 going out, but you got 12 men on the field for the defense. Georgia sets up at the Alabama two. First and goal Bulldogs, they trail 10-3, 5.28 to go first half. Where? Not this time. 
little hitting going on up front, Dan. Yeah, I think Robert Stewart, number 34, the nose tackle, uh, was the guy principally responsible for that. See, if that nose tackle comes down there and does what he's supposed to do, like his name, nose tackle, puts his nose into the dirt, piles everything up in that middle, and all of a sudden the running back is exposed to the defense when he comes through. He did the dirty work, and Derek Oden cleaned up. Isn't that always the way it is? The linemen do the dirty work. Second and goal. Larry Ware. Maybe got to the one. Thornton got out there. Odin again. And it's third and goal. Good lead blocking that time by number 32, Max Strong, the fullback. But watch the pursuit of the Alabama defense. See, that's how you're supposed to float to the ball and react. What happens is you bottle it up outside, you bottle it up inside, then you let your defense come in and make the stop. Will Georgia run again on third and goal at the one? Maxwell in motion. Tally wants to throw. Tipped away by Odin, or Shannon Mitchell would have had a touchdown. Derek Odin is having one sensational football game. This is being aware as a linebacker because you're running, you're recognizing play action. You got to get back out of there, then get in the air and try to knock this ball out. That's playing football down there in that end zone. What a great play. Fingertip save for Odin. And it forces a Georgia field goal attempt. And you may have heard the boos in the background from the Bulldog fans who wanted Ray Goff to go for it. Instead, John Casey will try a 19-yard field goal. He's in pretty close. He's got a wicked angle, but he is a left footer. And he got it. Four minutes, 11 seconds to go in the half. Georgia's cut the Alabama lead to four. Things got to feel pretty good about holding Georgia to the KC field goal, Dan. Those are the kinds of things that they've been doing all season long, playing extremely well defensively. John Casey again booms his kickoff. Prince Wembley will not bring it out. And Alabama will work at its own 20. It's now time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to the team players who've been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Today's game team leadership winners, Johnny Holland from Alabama. And the man who just kicked the field goal for the dogs, John Casey of Georgia. Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. There's a good look at Howard on the sideline for Alabama. His Crimson Tide leading by four. Hollinsworth on first down. A screen. Anderson run out near the 28-yard line by Bryant Gant. So far, no mistakes today for Gary Hollingsworth. There's the newest member of the SEC, Arkansas, taking it on the chin. Number one, Notre Dame early. Illinois, after beating Colorado, having trouble with Southern Illinois. And Clemson rolls big in non-conference play. Turner, the fullback. Up to about the 34-yard line. Mike Jones got in there from the Georgia secondary. See, one of the things that you want to do as a Georgia defense is you want to get those inside linebackers up, meeting up with that offensive line of Alabama and preventing those big runs inside with the fullback. So far, this game, the, the Georgia defense has not been able to do that. The dogs have been getting run out a little bit up in that middle. Maybe have to step up a little bit closer to that line of scrimmage to throw a shoulder into those blockers. First down, Alabama. Anderson cuts back. Ran into one of the officials and still got a first down. Chuck Carswell takes him out after a 14-yard gain. One of the things that happens, and we mentioned that you're playing against a defense like this. Now watch the left guard right here. Watch that second block on the linebacker. You see that cut block right in the middle of your screen. Those are the kinds of things that really kill the defense because all of a sudden you're taking those inside linebackers out of commission. They're no longer chasing the play. Now it's just the outside guys, and you can get the cutback. I think that was Bud Williams, the umpire, who is trying desperately to get out of the way, and we've got an Alabama player down. That was Trent Patterson who threw the block, as a matter of fact, on that inside linebacker. We'll check on the injury when we come back. Alabama leading 10-6. Oh, you got this done with. Alabama with a 10-6 lead here in Athens. Late in the second quarter. <laughs> a 
Trent Patterson was helped off the field, and William Barger comes in at right guard. Barger right there, number 62 in the middle of your screen. Gene Stallings, 12 years with Bear Bryant as a player and assistant coach. And then 14 under Tom Landry in Dallas, a head coach, both Texas A&M, and with the St. Louis and Phoenix Cardinals in the NFL, and now back at Alabama looking for a win. First down, tied at its own 49, Hollingsworth. Somehow squeaked that one into Derek Lassick. Some tight traffic over there. He got it there. Yeah, but that's kind of the thing that we were talking about earlier. We said Gene Stallings wanted him to do. When you throw that ball into that tight situation like that, put it on the road, don't float it up in there. And that's what the Hollingsworth did on this play. Now watch the protection he got up front. Nice and solid up front. That gives him that opportunity to be nice and calm back there when he's getting back in the pocket. Going back to that five-step drop as well. Lassick. Looks to have the first out at the Georgia 40. It gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 3.26 to go in the half. Penalty markers down. Beautiful day here in Athens, Georgia. Overnight rains. We've had sunshine for the most part. And this one looks to be going against Alabama. Illegal motion on the offense. All players were not set one second. Five-yard penalty and repeat the down. So instead of first down at the Georgia 40, it's second down and eight back at the 49. Fourth penalty against Alabama. Trent Patterson, by the way, is back in there at right guard. Georgia thought about a blitz. Hollinsworth off play action. Got it out to Steve Buskey, his tight end, who lost his footing near the 45-yard line. Buskey getting a chance to give Alabama a, a, a true tight end in terms of size at 6'6 and about 230. Uh, Lamont Russell, number 81 for Alabama, is the wide receiver. BYU is uh, blowing out <laughs> San Diego State already. Nebraska big over Minnesota. Third down, five, Alabama from the shotgun. Plenty of time for Hollinsworth. Derek Lassick made a one-hand catch. No, they're going to say incomplete. And the dog's defense is held. The interesting thing was there is both of the running backs came out of the backfield and crossed right in front of the center. And it appeared that they almost ran into one another when they made the cross. One of Hollingsworth's only misfires since early in the game. He's 9 out of 12. But the punt upcoming from Tank Williamson, who's in there, took over for Stan Moss, who had a punt lock that cost them the Florida game last week. Chuck Carswell for Georgia, going to let it go. It reaches the end zone. 46-yard kick. And Georgia's got two minutes and 32 seconds to do something offensively as they trail 10-6. If you're over there on that uh, Georgia offense right now, you got to be thinking about a couple things. So look, we got the passing game that's been working for us fairly successfully. Why not let's go back to that and work off a little play action and try to run the football outside wide, work the perimeter of Alabama's defense a little bit because it's been apparent that they've had a little problem running up inside near the center of the guard position. Hurst fakes the end around and keeps it. He's got 10. He's got 11. First down, and he's out of bounds at the 20. Make it the 31-yard line. Pick up of 11. And that's the reason why you want to run the perimeter. You want to get out wide. We welcome those of you who have been watching the other game to Athens, Georgia, in Sanford Stadium, where the Georgia Bulldogs trail the visiting Crimson Tide of Alabama 10-6, 226 to go first half. Garrison Hurst has been the offensive star for Georgia, 52 yards on seven carries. He's got almost five more out near the 36-yard line. Philip Doyle got the scoring going. After a 77-yard drive, he had a 29-yard field goal for the Tide. They, up, they were up 3-0. John Casey tied it with a 31-yard kick for Georgia. And another impressive drive for Alabama, 80 yards, capped by Robert Jones' one-yard touchdown plunge. Casey's 19-yard field goal when Georgia got down close. That's where we stand at 10-6. 
Hastings in motion. Garrison Hurst to the 40. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. John Sullins made the hit for Alabama. See the clock has worked its way under two minutes, first half. Hurst has put on a show so far, Dan. Really, you know, that's a, been the surprising thing for Georgia. Hurst, a, a freshman, has been able to get outside. He's got outstanding speed to hit the corner, I think. Uh, but the real story has been Alabama controlling the football and controlling the time of possession. Biggest third down of the day for the Bulldogs. A long one on third down. I don't think so. Alfonso Ellis, the fullback, unless he gets a great spot, looks like he might be short. Over the 40. how much Greg Talley says the dogs still have to go. And Alabama takes a timeout. A minute and two seconds to go in the half. Alabama clings to a four-point lead. Fifty-one seconds left in the first half. Alabama holds a 10-6 lead over the Georgia Bulldog. That was a little uh, Georgia pup that we saw there. <laughs> he got all his equipment ready. Give him about 10 years. He'll be ready. Let's see what Alabama will do with less than a minute. Hollinsworth. Got some pressure. Jones, who scored the touchdown, got about nine on that reception. Clock running, 37 seconds and moving. Tide going to bring it up without a huddle. Three wide receivers set, and Hollinsworth will work from the gun. Throws that one away to stop the clock. 19 seconds left in the half. Coming up at halftime, Andrew Joyce, Mike Francesa. They'll have the other action and highlights going on on this college football Saturday. You stay in. To tell Andrea and Mike that this is a heck of a scene down here. University of Georgia in Athens. A sea of red, 82,000 on hand. We saw some of the folks with the <laughs> motor homes rolling in last night with the roll tide painted on the side hopes of seeing Gene Stallings get his first win. Georgia has other thoughts, of course. Hollinsworth, plenty of time. Maybe too much time. Ten seconds left in the half. What you want your receivers to do is either take off and go to the end zone or come back and get open uh, so the quarterback can find you. Now, well, Lamont Russell, 81, has just taken off. He's running a streak route. He's going. He's wide open now. If Hollingsworth sees him, the problem was when you check down and you look off a couple of times, you lose some of those receivers. And that's what he did that time with Russell running down the, on the hash marks. So Alabama forced to punt with 10 seconds left to go. Remember, they've had trouble with their punting game this year. Just got the kick away. Carswell, fair catch at the 29. 37-yard kick, and the fair catch by Carswell will give Georgia one play. Fair catch by Carswell at the 29. Alabama had a punt block last week against Florida. It cost them the game. This is close. And the punt was blocked from outside, and that's where the pressure comes from. And this time, one of the things Alabama has to do is make sure they get that corner hard and don't allow that hard outside rush. Tally will have one play and jumping off too early appeared to be Lamont Tellis the right tackle. Now if you're going to do it this is the time to do it. Coaches forget about some of those things with only four seconds left on the clock. They're trying to kill Get it anyway. foul. False start on the offense. Lamont Tellis came back from a knee injury. Uh, 18 months he said he rehabbed that knee and he says now time to make some people pay for all of that rehab and he had to do. Said he appreciates every play of every practice in every game after being out that long time with a knee. Larry Ware, this will help his rushing statistics, got it all the way out to the 40-yard line before Stacy Harrison brings him down. And that ends our first half of play. The end of half number one, Alabama 10, Georgia 6. Our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station.
welcome to College Football Today Halftime. Now, Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa. Welcome back to CBS Sports Control, everyone. In the game you're watching, Alabama looking for its first win of the season. They are leading Georgia 10-6, that game at halftime. Now, let's bring you up to date on some other scores from around the country. We begin with Notre Dame at Michigan State. Notre Dame leading in the second quarter. Notre Dame has won 11 straight over Big Ten opponents. Last loss came to MSU in 1986. Number four, BYU at San Diego State. BYU has just scored. They are leading 28-14. The Aztec have never won at Cougar Stadium in Provo, but in the second quarter, they did reduce the uh, Cougars' lead. That was a Curtis Butts uh, touchdown there, and it is now. Uh, that was a, a touchdown pass for you there, and that's uh, to Andy Boyce, the, uh, the touchdown that you saw for BYU, 28-14 in the second quarter. Number seven, Michigan beat UCLA this afternoon in Ann Arbor. The Wolverines had little trouble with UCLA. We're going to pick up the action in the fourth quarter. Michigan running back John Vaughn, an incredible afternoon for him after a big day he had last weekend against Notre Dame. He breaks this one for 63 yards, a touchdown. Vaughn becomes the first Michigan runner to have back-to-back 200-yard -back rushing games, 288 yards today for John Vaughn as Michigan downs UCLA 38-15. to Elsewhere this afternoon, number eight, Nebraska all over Minnesota. The Cornhuskers have now won 14 straight in this series, and Mike, another tough September schedule for the Cornhuskers. You know, why don't we just put Nebraska up as idle until week nine when they play Colorado? It's that easy. <laughs> all right, elsewhere this afternoon, in a matchup of the defending ACC co-champions, Virginia all over Duke this afternoon, 59 to nothing. And in Durham today, it was all Virginia. We're going to pick it up third quarter. Sean Moore will hit Herman Moore. He's going to dance around in the secondary for a bit. Scores a 40-yard touchdown. Virginia's Sean Moore has thrown 11 touchdown passes this season. And Mike, Virginia improves to 4-0, and and they have just dominated all of their opponents so far this season. Considering their schedule and what I've seen, I think they're going to go 11-0 and this season. Okay. Among the teams playing later on tonight, number two, Florida State at Tulane. The Seminoles looking to extend the nation longest winning streak to 13 games. And uh, at uh, Alabama, and or rather uh, in tonight's games, uh, you see that there, the Florida State at Tulane. And number 15, Illinois, moving on in the scoreboard. They are trailing Southern Illinois. This would be a huge upset for the Salukis. They are leading in the second quarter, 21 to 7. This is a final tune-up for John Makovic and his uh, fighting Illini as they get ready for the Big Ten season. Number 11, Oklahoma, is leading Tulsa 45 to 7. That game in the third quarter. Believe it or not, the Sooners have not been 3-0 since 1987. And when we come back, we will update you on the baseball pennant races. But first, more scores, more football scores from around the country. Okay, we're going to go back to college football for just a bit at the Carrier Dome this afternoon. For the second week in a row, a Syracuse opponent comes from behind to tie the game 2020, the final there at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Penn State picks up its first win of the season. They're now 1-2 with a win over Rutgers this afternoon. Big win today for Louisville, for the Louisville program, and Howard Schnellenberger as they defeat West Virginia 9-7, the final in Morgantown. Number, uh, or rather, North Carolina also a winner today over Kentucky. Kentucky making its first trip to Chapel Hill since 1972 goes home with a loss. Iowa and Iowa State, the Hawkeyes defeat Iowa State. Iowa State playing without Blaze Bryant this afternoon. And number 13, Arkansas, upset this afternoon by Ole Miss 21-17. First win for Ole Miss in Little Rock since 1960. And the Rebels did put on quite a show this afternoon in the fourth with eight seconds left in the game. Ole Miss leading 21-17. They stop Arkansas's Ron Dickerson as time ran out there, the final Ole Miss with the upset 21-17. And we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we will go in the huddle for Mike's huddle stuff and some conference realignment news. That when we come back.
A big East, and today it was reported that South Carolina will join the Southeastern Conference. And Mike, the question now, what would the implications of that move be? Well, you look at it from the SEC perspective. They wanted to expand into Texas and into Florida, into those markets. Instead, they wind up with Arkansas and South Carolina. They didn't do too well. <laughs> Not exactly the way they had planned. What about the Big East, though? What's the deal with that now? Miami will join the Big East. A couple of fine points to be worked out, but they will join the Big East Conference. Why the Big East for Miami? It allows them to maintain that dominant position in football, be tougher to do from the SEC, but the big reason is basketball. They wanted to upgrade their program, and there's no better place to be than in the Big East in terms of recruiting, economic reasons. Good move for Miami. Good place for them to be. All right, Mike, you know as well as anyone that the Miami Hurricanes have a reputation as the L.A. Raiders of college football. Well, Miami did nothing to dispel that notion last week against California. The Hurricanes, however, finally crossed the line with head coach Dennis Erickson. Yeah. If they cross that line, or anybody on this football team crosses that line, He'll be pulled out of the football game, and he won't play that week. I talked to Dennis yesterday. He said, Mike, I was embarrassed. The administration was embarrassed. He said, they did cross that line. He said, I want my kids to have fun, to celebrate inside the team concept. He said, I called those players in and said, if it happens again, you won't play. And he said, it won't happen here again. All right, now one of the players involved, linebacker Michael Barrow, says, hey, it's just a generation gap problem, right? He says it's a little bit of a, the sack dance was really just a little bit of a, a nightclub dance that young kids understand. Do it at a nightclub, not on a 50-yard line. <laughs> All right, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Last week, Notre Dame quarterback Rick Meyer pointed out that his task in beating Michigan was a lot easier than the job his brother Jeff has over in Saudi Arabia with the 82nd Airborne. We spoke with Jeff earlier today about his own pressure he told me that um, that he was thinking about me over here and everything and hoping everything was all right but he he knew that uh, that I have no problem dealing with whatever comes up the pressure is on all of the 82nd and all the paratroopers but when you look around you and realize you know you got all your other army buddies and all your different units and all the firepower here you know you feel a lot safer Jeff did get word on the Michigan game last week and today's game with Michigan State on Armed Services Radio, so he'll get to listen. You know, we in sports talk about pressure. A kid in his first start trying to drive Notre Dame to a big score, to a winning score in front of the nation. But when you talk about the real world, there's pressure. Yeah, it puts everything in perspective. Sure Thanks, Mike. And college football today on CBS continues after this. <laughs> in Athens with Dan Jiggets and Mike Joy. I'm Brad Nessler. We're set to start the third quarter. Philip Doyle's got it teed up. Chad Wilson and Andre Hastings, the deep duo for Georgia. Wilson will take it a yard deep. Across the 20. Nice run back by Wilson, his second of the day. This one good for 33 yards. You have to wonder what went on at halftime in the Georgia locker room. Mike Joy's got more on that. Mike? Coach Goff told his defense they were playing hard. They needed to play a little smarter. They messed up on a couple of big coverages, and that allowed Alabama to break the big play. He likes what the offense is doing. I think you'll see a lot of those toss sweeps to the short side of the field in this half. They told his offense his main mission was to keep the Alabama offense off the field. Larry Ware and Garrison Hurst have done most of the running for Georgia. And Ware got a yard. That's about it. Derek Oden has been all over the field for Alabama today. And he's in on that stop again. Got some help from Stewart, the nose tackle. Big fella who started his career as a fullback. He's been all over the place. Yeah. Now a nose tackle. He's one of those guys, you know, they always talk about working up and working down the <laughs> ecological chain. Well, now he's down on all four. He went from about 235 to 280. So he did it all in the weight room. Georgia second and nine. They open the third quarter on offense. Ware had an opening, bounced off one man, and got across the 40. Tough run for Larry Ware out near the 42. Yeah. Byron Holbrooks, the nose tackle in on the stop that time. Right, one of the things is happening on the left side of the offensive line. Watch Bill Rosenberg and William Wynn. Wynn tries to block down number 52. Trying to clear that area up, but what you got to be able to do is block off that inside linebacker. If you can pick him up, chipping off, then you get a real big run out of it where you want to run. And Larry Ware doesn't have to break it all the way outside. Ware found out where and came up just one yard short. Oh. Third and a goal. Third down and a yard right here. Play action. Tally just got rid of it. And complete first down near the 43 of Alabama to Kevin Maxwell. Tally paid the price, but he got 15. George Teagan was on the coverage, and George tried to settle back and break back to the football as a cornerback and just slipped down in there. But 
watch the price you talked about that Tally paid when he went through on the play action here. He got wrapped in the back after he released it. But you see he can complete the football, and that's because T, as you saw right at the top of the screen, it slipped down already. Larry Ware on a toss sweep. Got to the 40. Ware's a tough little runner. And that's how the coaching staff des describes when they say he's a little back, but he's a tough guy. They are going out to that perimeter, though, as they said they would. Mike told us that the, uh, that's what they talked about in the locker room at the half. They're trying that perimeter of the Alabama defense. Gene Stallings is just going to say to the safeties, get up and give me some support on that corner. Second and six, Ellis in motion. Garrison Hurst this time. And the freshman tailback to the 37 of Alabama. Stacey Harrison made the tackle. I tell you what, the big men up front love this kind of football. See, you get down in there, it's a natural grass field, so when you fall down, you don't get hurt. <laughs> I mean, you just line up and just wrap some people. You know, that's what it's all about. You get all that fancy moving around, the motion and all the wide outs coming in. Hey, just line it up and let's see who's the better guys up front. Last time on third down, Georgia went to the play-action pass. This time, Maxwell and Hummings, the wide outs. For Tally, third down and three. Tally's in trouble. Spencer Hammond, who drilled Tally after he threw his last pass, gets to him that time. One of the nice things that Alabama does is they mix things up extremely well. Nice to look at Spencer right there. But on the right side of your screen now, you're going to see him number 44 coming in on the blitz backside. Little play action fake there. Everybody's trying to go down the line. Then Tally wants to come back out on a naked bootleg. But the problem is Spencer Hammond was standing there waiting for him. He stayed at home. You get Very no backside help there, do you? No. You're all out there by yourself. You hope you fake the defense out. Scott Armstrong to kick. Jeff Marshall. The deep man for Alabama. High spiral. Georgia trying to down it. Can't quite get there. Nice effort, but it'll be Alabama at its own 20-yard line on offense. Ray Goff, Moultrie, Georgia, his hometown. The only three years he hasn't been in this state having something to do with football was as an assistant at South Carolina for three seasons. But eight years under Vince Dooley, now in his second season at the controls as head man, finished seventh in the Heisman balloting back in 76 as the starting quarterback and SEC player of the year for the Dogs. He's been here a long time, says, I don't want to coach anyplace else. Anderson. The Dogs having a hard time bringing him down. He picked up almost nine. You know, one of the things that is so beautiful about the counter train, we keep talking about it, but if guys, if you can hold it right there, watch these two guys now, particularly watch the guard come around and throw his block at the point of attack. That's uh, Robinette number 50. This is what this play is all about. You get out there, you let those big linemen pull a little bit right there, he gets on Mo Lewis. Mo Lewis did a pretty nice job, by the way, of putting that shoulder in there and dumping Robinette after he made the contact. I have a, a good feeling about Mo Lewis, number 57, on that Georgia defense. I think he's going to be a very high round selection in the NFL draft. Outstanding speed, outstanding character. We and, talked a little uh, bit about his pro aspirations, and all he said was, I want to be an assistant coach and a teacher someday. Yep. So you not look too far down the future because you might miss something that's going to happen today. Alabama at its own 32. Screen pass, Anderson, one hand catch. This freshman has had quite a day already, and I think he's got another first down for the tie. Ralph Thompson finally brought him down. One of the state's top ten players, Chris Anderson, out of Huntsville, Alabama. Nineteen touchdowns as a senior in high school last year. Gets Alabama another first down. At the 42-yard line. Play fake by Hollingsworth. Had the ball tipped and almost picked off by John Allen. In Athens, Georgia at Sanford Stadium. 58th meeting between the Georgia Bulldogs and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. 82,000 plus on hand here today. And it is 10-6. Alabama holds to the lead with 10-01 to go third quarter. 
Brad, this is my first time down in the SEC doing a football game. It's, it's really kind of special down here. You, know, you come in and everybody's excited. Everybody's in school colors and just getting pumped up for the football game. You know what they say, Southern football is like a religion and every Saturday is a holy day. <laughs> Worth all day again, but he runs out of time and he's dropped for a loss. That's going to be a coverage sack as Eric Coney got it. Hollingsworth just couldn't find anybody, Dan. And, uh, and good pressure, too. Uh, you know, one of the things is if you get good coverage, it's going to allow your defensive line to get in there and get some pressure on the quarterback. Now, you can see right now Hollingsworth cannot find his primary receiver. He's looking, he's looking. He said, hey, I'm not going to throw another interception. Just tuck it down and take the two or three-yard loss. A three-yard loss in a third and 13 is what the Tide faces here. Alabama at its own 39-yard line from the shotgun. Hollingsworth. Incomplete. Intended for Lamont Russell, and he led him badly. And Brad, when you see the quarterback hopping and doing that hot foot in there, then you know things are not going well. The timing is just a little bit off right now for Hollingsworth. Now, now, look at this. The receiver, Finkley, thinks that he's open running down the sideline. But one of the problems is if you are open, start running. Don't look back. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good punt. Fair catch called for by Georgia back at the 32-yard line. Their offense will have it back when we return. 9.03 to go third quarter. At the 32-yard line, it'll be CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet to invite you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. United Airlines, serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Bud Dry. Why ask why? Try Bud Dry for refreshment that's beyond question. Back at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. The hometown Bulldogs trailing the Crimson Tide of Alabama 10-6 with 9.03 to go third quarter. Greg Talley at the controls. Had the pass in the hands of Chris Broom, his tight end, and Broom couldn't hold on to it. Here's what's happened so far up through the midway point of the third quarter as Alabama got on the board first with a field goal, and you can see their total offense and the fact that they have mixed it up well. Hollinsworth looked better in the first half than he has in the second. Four sacks by the Alabama defense. Uh, really been a story for them. Uh, they've really gotten after uh, Greg Talley to this point. Not let him get comfortable in the pocket. Garrison Hurst broke two tackles. Got to about the 36-yard line. Jeremy Nunley made the tackle defensively. I think it was uh, Byron Holbrooks, who was number 79 for Alabama, really messed the play up there. He's coming all the way from the backside. It's a counter trade. Okay, you roll it, guys. Now watch 79 follow Lamont Tellus. Watch Holbrooks follow him down this line of scrimmage. He says, hey, I've seen this play a few times today. I think I might know what you're doing, but the danger there is if you come back out, fake that, that play, and then come back with a reverse, he's in trouble. Tally on third down. Completes it to Andre Hastings, but he's about two yards short of the first down. And Georgia will have to give it up again. Andre Hastings. Morrow, Georgia. Final decision came down between Notre Dame, Miami, and Georgia. And quite frankly, he shocked some people when he opted for Ray Goff's Bulldog program because just haven't thrown the football as much as, say, Miami. You told me the story about him switching hats in the middle of a press conference and <laughs> shocking everyone. It sure did. <laughs> Armstrong to punt. Another nice kick. Jeff Marshall makes the catch. And a flag goes down. The Georgia not give him enough room. Yeah, I think you have to give him a, at least two yards, and they didn't really give him that, uh, that cushion. So that's probably what the penalty is. it off against Georgia. Violation of the two yard buffer zone, five yard penalty from the spot of the foul, push down. Sometimes even when you try to do the right thing, it's hard to get out of the way. <laughs> that was Brian Cleveland, number 37. He knew he was in there trying to do a little moonwalk to get out of there. 
Still 10-6, Alabama, 7.35 to go in the third. With a 10-6 lead, Alabama works from its own 26-yard line. Here was 7.35 to go, third quarter. Hollinsworth has a man wide open. Donnie Finkley is going to have a first down out near the 37-yard line. Pickup of 11 yards. Mike Joyce found some oddities today. I think he has another. Mike? Well, Georgia is the only major university that honors their mascots with a final resting place in the stadium. The Siler family of Savannah has been providing the Ugga dogs for University of Georgia. There's a damn good dog and not bad for a dog. <laughs> and probably the most famous of the whole family is Ugga Four, the dog of the decade. He went to the Heisman Trophy dinner in New York with Herschel Walker in 1982, wearing, of course, black tie and a white tail. <laughs> Ugga Five is on the sideline today, the last pup born, sired by Ugga Four and the only white English Bulldog pup of his daddy, and he hopes to carry on the tradition. His dad went to a bowl game every year, the decade of the 80s. Hey, That's a tough act to follow, isn't it? Yeah, I heard uh, uh, athletic director Vince Dooley said that Ugga Five really started filling out that sweater. Second down. Over the eight. last couple of months. He's a true freshman. <laughs> Second down and eight. Alabama. Draw play. Turner to the fullback. Big hole. To the Georgia 45. 16 yards. Fred, we talked before about Collinsworth with the play action. This time he followed, he kept that same fake and it really put the defense in a sweat because you won't see any linebackers coming near Turner. See, they're thinking, hey, right now, hey, what is it? It's play action, so they take off and here comes Turner right up the gut of the defense. Alabama, I'm sure, would love another time-consuming drive, giving it to guys like Turner. As we worked our way to the six and a half minute mark, third quarter, got five more as Martin Houston who's been shuttling at fullback with Turner. Other scores around college football today. How about that? Huh. Michigan State surprising Notre Dame. They're coming off a tough game against Michigan, though. The Aztecs have fought back against BYU. Michigan rebounds from their opening loss, and Nebraska's having no trouble with the Golden Gophers. 10-6 here, Alabama. They've worked it to the Georgia 40. Flags are down. Jones cuts outside, got a couple, that's all. Joe Lewis the over game. there to bring him down. The Brad, this is exactly the kind of drive that Alabama's looking for right now, though. Uh, they've already used up about two minutes off of the clock. They're probably hoping that they can get about five or six off the clock and then get in and get a score. Gene Stallings told us of the penalties against Alabama motion. Gene Stallings told us he likes a 60-40 blend of uh, run and pass. Likes that combination because he feels that not only does it give you the opportunity to burn up the clock, but also Illegal puts you in good in situations. Field, not set one second on the offense. Repeat the down. Puts you in good situations to get the first down. Illegal motion penalty, the fifth flag on the day against Alabama. So now they've got second down and ten. At the Georgia 45. in front of him got it to Russell it'll be a first down Alabama near the Georgia 34 yard line pickup of 11 Lamont Russell was questionable coming into the day with a bad ankle and a bruised sternum from a hit he took last week against Florida you know what happened on, the, on that last play uh, was 93 Eric Cooney came from his outside position his defensive end position and he ran a loop up inside now the quarterback just simply rolls out that way watch over on the left side of his screen so Cooney 93 roll inside Hollingsworth comes outside and there's nobody at contain there to contain it they go back to the draw play now the big fullback Houston dragging would be Georgia tacklers for about four yards Approaching the five-minute mark, remaining in the third quarter. Second down, the seven. Second down, a long six for Alabama. They'll go with the sweep, cutting back is Lassick. He might have another first down. Dwayne Simmons in on the stop. One of the things you, one of the things you really like to see is the offensive line starts firing out, moving people off the line of scrimmage, particularly this point in the game. Okay, roll it, guys. Watch the right side of that offensive line for Alabama. Good movement up front. And that's what you want your people to do. Start moving that defense off the line of scrimmage. It clears it out, so your running back can see downfield and see where the opportunities are. Third down and inches. 
ahead and up in the air is Jones. We've seen him go airborne before today. Once for a touchdown, this time for a first down. Oh, Brad, I want to tell you something. Roger Schultz and Trent Patterson, 66 to 65. That's the way you want to do it up in the middle. They moved the line back about five or six yards. And as you can see right now, there's a big void right in the middle of that line of scrimmage. And you can see those guys five yards down the field with their blocks. All the way to the Georgia 22, first and 10, Alabama. First man, nowhere to go this time for Kevin Turner. Mo Lewis made the initial contact right there, number 57. Led Georgia in sacks last year with 10 and came out of the same high school as Richard Dent. His high school coach says, hey, he's a better player than Richard Dent was at yeah. this stage. And he told us, he said, hey, I don't know how they can compare us because Richard didn't even play defense. And he said, why not? He said he couldn't, he, he couldn't block offensively, so they moved him to defense later on. But he was an offensive player. We promised Mo we'd pass that along, so if Richard Dent was watching, he'd hear it. <laughs> Second down and long for the tie. The counter, Jones, to about the 13. I think he might have another first down. Wayne Simmons in on the tackle. Jones with a nice run. Chris Robin, that's the senior out of Enterprise, Alabama, number 50. Watch him throw this block. One of his heroes is John Hanna, who is a great offensive lineman in the NFL as well as college football. And those are the kinds of blocks that John Hanna used to throw, those pancakes. You know, you put them out there, put a little syrup and butter on them, and just let the, your back run it up. I jumped the gun on Jones. He didn't get the first. He's about a yard short. Quick snap. Turner, the fullback. will be close. Simmons made the initial contact, and then John Allen helped out. They may have to take a look at this one. It's going to be an east spot or a west spot. They'll bring the sticks from the far side. If it's an east spot, Alabama has the first <laughs> uh, first down. So west, Georgia gets uh, its fourth down. You know what Ray Goff's hoping for. First down, Alabama. Go east, young man. Just enough. <laughs> One of the things Ray Goff told us about his team, though, and particularly about the defense, he says, even though we've had all the injuries and all the problems that we've had, these kids will line up and fight you. And so far, that's what they've done with this Alabama group. Twelfth play of the drive. It's taken Alabama over five minutes to get this far. First down. Jones, the tailback. Georgia stretches it out nicely. Bryant Gant made the tackle. Gantz had to step in because, again, Norman Cowens was arrested this week on a drug charge. And so Gant has stepped in and filled the void and done a rather nice job of it so far today. You know, you mentioned Norman Cowens in a situation where he got, uh, he was uh, apprehended selling uh, or buying uh, drugs. It was interesting to hear Ray Goff's statement. He said, you know, I'll protect my guys, I'll work with them, but I do not condone that kind of activity. And I think that's the kind of thing that a young coach has to do is take that kind of stand in that situation. Second and 11, flags down. Jones shows determination down near the seven. Again, Morris Lewis and John Allen combined on the hit, but again, a marker down at the line of scrimmage. 10-6, Alabama leading Georgia here in Athens in the third quarter with 124. Jones has the only touchdown of the day. Doyle's kicked one field goal for Alabama. John Casey has kicked two for the Bulldogs, and that's accounted for our scoring. And this one, they'll walk off against Alabama, penalty number six. Illegal procedure on the offense, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. It beats it out. Those, those little mental errors. The little mental errors that Gene Stallings kept talking about. He says, hey, look, what can you do about those things? You know, you, number one, you don't have a lot of time to work with these kids now. He said, that's one of the big differences between college football and pro football. You know, you may have these kids for an hour and a half in meetings, and they got to go on to, to all of their classes. So sometimes those little things start falling between the cracks in a new organization such as this one. Second and 16 for the Tide at the Georgia 18. Here comes a blitz. Collinsworth got rid of it, but he couldn't get it to Donnie Finkley, who was open. And Georgia has blitzed very little today, Dan. Yeah, but they, they were looking for a certain opportunities to send the linebackers, and this is one where they took advantage of it. Now watch over the right side of your screen. You'll see the pressure coming in on Hollingsworth. 
from the outside and inside. John Allen and Torrey Evans both coming in. Evans being 45 and Allen 44. About 82,000 on their feet. Third down and long for Alabama. Hollinsworth wants to change it up. Quick hitch to about the nine-yard line to Finkley, but well short of the first down. And Finkley looks like he's hobbled there. Someone they landed on his ankle, I believe, but uh, a good decision there by Hollingsworth to check off and get the quick the quick pop out to him. He was having a little trouble hearing, and you saw him turn around and look at the referee as if to say, I can't hear, and the referee made no movement at all, so Hollingsworth just threw the quick hitch to the nine-yard line, and now it'll bring on Philip Doyle again. Doyle on the season, four for five led the SEC in field goals last year. This one, a 26-yard attempt. Doyle splits the uprights, and Alabama stretches their lead to a touchdown. 19 seconds to go, third quarter, 13-6 tied. It's now a touchdown difference as Doyle has added three more for Alabama. The tie, 13 to six over the Bulldogs, 19 seconds to go, third quarter. Dan, we talked about a time-consuming drive for Alabama. It's, about, it's just a little over seven minutes uh, for the 66 yards and the 16 places you mentioned, Brad. So that's kind of what they wanted to do is drain that clock, and they did it. Doyle's kickoff, a line drive. Wilson's done a nice job on the return duty today, this time from the three his head down and gets as much as he can out near the 27 Jerry yard line. Wilson. Coming up tomorrow, to the, the NFL today, Greg Gumbel, Terry Bradshaw, Leslie Visser, and Pat O'Brien. Start things off for you at 12.30, then many of you will see the Vikings and the Bears at Soldier Field. Dallas and Washington, Phoenix and New Orleans are our other early games. The doubleheader, Philadelphia and the Rams. Eagles looking for their first win, or the, the uh, Falcons and the 49ers at Candlestick. NFL doubleheader tomorrow here on CBS. And Harry Dog was telling you to be there. You saw a point. Larry Ware, nowhere to go. Derek Oden makes yet another tackle. He's been all over the field. What do you expect from a linebacker that's from Tuscaloosa, though? I mean, you know, you, you know that tradition of linebackers at Alabama. You grow up in Tuscaloosa, you're going to be the inside linebacker for the uh, Crimson Tide. He's got 11 tackles on the day. At the end of the third quarter, it's Alabama 13, Georgia 6. Our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by Visa. Accepted at nearly 7 million places worldwide. Visa is everywhere you want to be. All State for home, auto, life, and business insurance. You're in good hands with All State. And by Thrifty Car Rental, because it's your money. Georgia still looking for its first touchdown as we head into the fourth quarter. They trail by seven. Play fake. Tally wants to go deep. Cummings can't quite pull it down. Well, Georgia pulled the trick play to start the fourth quarter. Didn't work for them. Charles Gardner and George Teague back there defensively for the tie. Nice concept, though, trying to run that uh, fake uh, reverse and go downfield. Most of the offense for Georgia has come from their two tailbacks today. Larry Ware, Garrison Hurst. There's the numbers. Hurst, the freshman, has been having a sensational day running the football. Greg Talley, meanwhile, only four out of ten for 45 yards throwing the football. Here comes his 11th throw. Maybe. Sack back at the 20. John Sullivan and Steve Webb. That's sack number five for Alabama. I tell you, it was a combination of good effort up front by the Alabama defense and good coverage also by the secondary of Alabama's defense. Watch the pressure up front. This is one of the reasons why Greg Talley's been having problems. He's set up right there. Now he recognized that rush is collapsing on him, and he tries to start scrambling, and he's just not a scrambling quarterback. George Hafner, the Dogs' offensive coordinator, said this is the first team that gets down in the track stance and just will come at you, and they did there. 
high snap from center. Armstrong got it away. Not the greatest of kicks, but he handled the snap well. And he's going to get a Georgia roll out of this one. 52-yard kick with the roll. 13 minutes and 58 seconds now remaining. Gene Stallings saying, is this the day I get my first win as head coach at Alabama? Okay, now, game plan if you're over in that uh, Alabama offense. Same kind of situation. You want to drain the clock one more time with a nice long drive here, mixing it up a little uh, short play action passes, but basically keeping it on the ground and keeping that clock moving. First down for the Tide. Hollinsworth screen again to his fullback, Turner, with some blockers in front. Takes the air route for a 12-yard gain and a first down. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game for each team. And for our 20th consecutive year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Vandy with a bit of a surprise in the SEC. And Maryland has had an excellent year. Georgia Tech about an hour drive away from where we are rolls big and North Carolina hands Bill Curry a loss Alabama's going to try the end around and Prince Wembley's got a lot of room to the 37 yard line 24 yards Prince Wembley Brad, remember we talked a little bit earlier in the game about how on the backside you have to stay home? Watch Cooney 93 react down. See, when you come back down like that, it's perfect timing to run that reverse. There's a block right there. That's when you want to run that reverse. When you get the defense reacting down the line of scrimmage and not staying at home on the backside, you run that reverse. Steve Buskey is tight end. Gave him a nice block. Spring, sprung him free for 24 yards. Now Hollingsworth back on top. Wanted Lamont Russell. And he took a pretty good lick back there from Mike Jones. And yeah, Lamont Russell got hit in the sternum last week and uh, had him out, out for a couple of plays. And this time he takes another shot as he's looking back for the ball. This is when the receiver is most vulnerable, and that's a nice little shot there. Kind of serving warning back that you come into that secondary, you're going to get hit. Mike Jones, whose brother Sean, is Georgia Tech's starting quarterback. And I tell you, when Georgia and Georgia Tech get together, the family has a heck of a time knowing what to wear to the game. <laughs> they usually just wear black because it's red and black and gold and black so they can get away with it. Play it safe. <laughs> Second and ten. Inside handoff. Turner, the workhorse fullback to the 30-yard line. Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggins, and Mike Joy with you between the hedges at Sanford Stadium in Athens. It's a beautiful college football Saturday. 82,000 plus on hand for this one, and they have watched Alabama move out to a touchdown lead. Gene Stallings has two field goals from Philip Doyle, one touchdown from Robert Jones, clinging to a seven-point cushion, as Georgia's been only able to muster two field goals by John Casey. And there's the way it looks as we approach the 12 and a half minute mark. Third down, Alabama. Hollingsworth, and he threw it. Sidearm had a man open, Derek Lassick, but he couldn't get enough on it. So Alabama is going to try to tack on three more. Philip Doyle, who's already connected twice today from 29 and 26, has 59 career field goals. He not only led the SEC last year, he led the country with 22 three-pointers. This one is from 47 yards, and obviously it's a gigantic kick for the Tide. Doyle got a lot of leg into it. And he got it. That one is very big for Alabama thinking about the importance of that because now they're up 10 points, Brad. 12-21 to go in the ball game. It's now Alabama leading Georgia by 10. 12-21 to go in the ball game. Philip Doyle just hit his 60th career field goal. And that's his holder, Wall, who's gotten more excited, I think, than Philip did. <laughs> 
Tally, Greg Tally, the left of your screen with his helmet off. We expect to see Preston Jones in at quarterback for Georgia on their upcoming possession. Chad Wilson, Andre Hastings, deep for Georgia. They need a good run back. From the 10, it's Wilson. Picked his way along out to about the 26-yard line. Rip Mitchell and Mike Smith down there to make the hit. So enter Preston Jones, who started last week in the win over Southern Mississippi, the bigger and more physical of the two quarterbacks, Dan. 6'3", 6'4", and about 220 pounds. You can see over the line a little bit better, and he's got, uh, he's got some playing experience, but he's the, the passing quarterback of the two. Got it out to Hummings. Cummings to the 32. Be second down about five. Preston Jones, a sophomore out of Anderson, South Carolina. They Six really figured three. now what Georgia has to do is they have to start throwing the football. I don't think there's any question about that with 12 minutes remaining in the fourth period. Now's the time to start putting it up. And, of course, that's what we said before. That's how you're going to see Preston Jones now. Georgia's going to be in a three-wide receiver set. Damon Evans, Kevin Maxwell, and Andre Hastings. Jones in and out of the hand of Mitchell is tight end. It'll be third down. I'm sorry, Brad. One thing that was interesting in talking to uh, Greg Talley about the relationship between him and Jones and the rotating of the quarterbacks, he said, you know, people try to make a lot out of that, but really, we're best friends, and we both kind of look forward to the opportunity to help the other guy and get in there. When you get your chances to play, you go ahead and take advantage of it. But there's no uh, animosity between the two. While Talley started all 12 games last year for Georgia, Jones was in and played a lot. And he's in at relief duty again. Third down. Here comes a blitz. He got rid of it, but he couldn't quite get it to his tight end. Robert Stewart applied the pressure. My guy, Robert Stewart. Here's a guy who likes to, you know, his best movie is Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> if you're the quarterback, you know why. Number 34, right in the middle of your screen. How would you like to see that happening in front of you? Scott Armstrong in for his seventh punt of the day for Georgia. And Jeff Marshall, back for Alabama, has mishandled one today. And again, he'll call for the fair catch. It takes it safely near the 36-yard line. 11.49 to go, Alabama by 10. In the last 10 years at home, Georgia's won 85% of their games. Alabama by 10 here in the fourth quarter. Anderson off the right side. Cuts back in the middle and got met head on by Ralph Thompson. Gary Hollinsworth has done a nice job for Alabama today. There's his numbers, and I don't think he's aware that he is a uncle. As less than two hours ago, Joshua Hollinsworth was born, and we congratulate Ryan, Gary's brother, and his sister-in-law, Kara. Everybody's doing well, we understand. Yeah, he, said, he told us about it yesterday. He said that they were going to induce labor because uh, she was overdue, and uh, he was kind of excited about the situation today, and uh, I'm sure he'll get the message as soon as the game is over. His new nephew's proud so far. Turner in motion. And flags all over. Brad, it just appears to me that right now, if you're in a Georgia defense, you got to be thinking. Dead ball. Ball start on the offensive line. Repeat to them. We need a big play right now. We need a turnover to get our offense back on the field. And if you can get it down here in a position that allows you to go on in and get a touchdown and get you back in the game with about 11.40 remaining on the clock. You need an interception, a fumble recovery, something like that, something very positive to get back in the ball game. The only problem for Georgia, here we are in the fourth quarter of the third game. They are without an interception this year. Hollinsworth. Completes it. Very short gain. Derek Lassick run out on the far side. 16 to 6. Alabama leading Georgia. Let's go to New York for a baseball update. 
All right, guys, the Mets have won 11 to 5 over the Cubs. They're now two and a half games behind the Pirates. Meanwhile, in a game we were supposed to televise at noon, the Yankees and the Red Sox have just started after a five hour rain delay at Yankee Stadium. We will keep you updated throughout our college football coverage. Now, back to Brad Nessler. All right, Andrea, you know the hot dog sales at Yankee Stadium are phenomenal today. Hollinsworth on third down, completes it. First down catch by Lorenzo Cole. And so Alabama can keep this drive alive. This is what you want to do right now if you're on an Alabama sideline. Start nickel and dime in the defense, you know, taking the little things that they're giving you, dumping the ball off short, finding the little open areas, and making enough to move the sticks and keep the clock rolling, and that's exactly what they're doing. And straight ahead, flags down, Turner the fullback. Actually may lose a half yard here. Number one, Notre Dame in trouble against the Spartans. BYU back in front now. The Aztecs of San Diego State. Boy, Southern Illinois giving the Illini all they need. Same story with Furman in Florida. Florida, of course, hit with probation this week. Not too happy about that. They were hoping for a bowl situation at the end of the year and apparently will not get it. I said one second on the offense. The penalty is declined. Georgia declines a penalty. I think it's the third time today we've had an offensive formation by one of these two teams and all the players weren't set for the full second count. Yeah, either that or, you know, they're not all up on the line of scrimmage. The outside guys, far outside, have to be up on the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Collinsworth had it batted down. Mike Steele, I think, is the guy that got a big paw in the way. Junior out of Wichita, Kansas. He's really the only official starter left on that front wall yeah, for Georgia. Know, when you really think about how depleted that defensive line is, I'm sure Mike Steele was, was wondering where all of his guys are. He's six four, and he gets elevated on the play, just slaps it away. Well, with under 11 minutes to go, Georgia's got to hold Alabama here on third down along 10. Here comes a blitz. Incomplete. Intended for Finkley. And so Alabama got one first down, and now they've got to kick it away. Now this is the situation that Georgia's been looking forward to now. Offensively, can you come back on and, and make the clock work to your advantage and put some points up on the board? Chuck Carswell back, awaiting the Alabama punt. They put two blockers back with it. Got it out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Brad, there was a block on the plate. Number 48, Andre Washington, with a stick of the game. Still, Alabama leading by 10. What? 10.40 to play here in Athens, and Alabama clinging to a 10-point lead over the Georgia Bulldogs. So you want to play special teams. Check out the hit at the end of this play. <laughs> so I said we're going away. That was Andre Washington, inside linebacker, as a freshman for uh, the University of Georgia. That's what makes uh, that's what makes the film session on special teams kind of kind of special when you get to watch those kind of sticks. Bulldogs line up in their three wide out formation for Preston Jones. Screen to Hurst. He can run. He got 16. He has been the Georgia offense today. We talked about the inevitable comparisons to Herschel Walker. As long as Garrison Hurst keeps doing things like this, the things that are very special to running backs, those comparisons are going to stick around because he's pretty good. He might even be a little bit better than Herschel at some point or another in his career. First down, Georgia. Straight ahead. Strong. The fullback got three. And the clock has now worked its way under the 10-minute mark. 16-6 Alabama. Preston Jones in as a reliever. Greg Talley started this game. You know, Brad, at some point or another, you think that 
you know, Preston has to go up top. I mean, they need a quick pop right here. They need some juice right now. There hasn't been a long ball thrown by either team all day. Larry Ware. Nice stiff arm on Stacy Harrison. Then he crawled his way for about another yard. Alabama leading here. We got an upset in the making, though. Michigan State by 12 over number one Notre Dame. You know that's going to happen at some point or another. Notre Dame's schedule is just brutal. You know, to me last night, weekend. they're not going to go the whole distance yeah. without losing one. Yeah, it's, it's tough to do it right now. Nobody knows how much tougher it is to do those kinds of things than these two coaches on the field right now. Dean Stallings at 0-2, hoping to get his first win today. Third down, a long three. Larry Ware cuts inside. I think he got it. Yeah, he got one of those east spots as well. Excellent effort on the play. Now, you know, one of the things you look for if you're running backs and running in traffic or running in tough situations like Larry Ware is here, you want to see him with that little bit of desire to get that first down, that little extra effort that it takes to be successful on the play. And that's what Larry Ware showed us there. With Montgomery, Alabama. Don't you know he'd love to be the guy that comes out the shining star of this one? Jones. Damon Evans. First down, Georgia. Preston Jones was going over to put a little heat on that arm. Starting to warm it up a little bit now. Left side of the screen, that's, uh, Evans will be down on that side. Jones with an out, out pattern at about, uh, excuse me, it's a curl pattern at about 15. First down at the Alabama 32. Quick throw to Hastings. Broke one tackle, and then he took a wicked hit as he worked inside the 30. I tell you what, uh, I thought Jones did an excellent job of getting rid of the football. Blitz in his face. He just kind of sidearms the thing out there. Still a long way to go. 16-6 Alabama. Under eight minutes now, though. Second down, seven for Georgia. Hastings in motion. Larry Ware. Stacy Harrison and Spencer Hammond tripped him up. And I'm not so sure if Spencer Hammond doesn't make that stop that he doesn't score. He's rolling when, when Hammond just kind of reaches out. Looked like he just grabbed his foot. Larry Ware comes out. Garrison Hurst checks in. The two Georgia tailbacks have provided most of the spark today, and they need two more yards here on third down. At the Bama 24, Garrison Hurst. first down and got out of bounds and, and i like the extra effort that he gave on the run see because right there he legitimately should have been down but he exploded through the tackle and got the extra yardage for the first down 658 to play 16 to 6 alabama first stays in there as a single setback because it took out a couple of defenders and allowed Hurst to get outside. Garrison Hurst, his mom tells everybody, remember, he's only a teenager. You have a hard time convincing a few fellows out there in uh, Crimson and White that he's only a teenager. You've made the comparison, and many have. Garrison Hurst and the Herschel Walker connection, they're not really built the same. Garrison Hurst said, you know, 
I don't mind the comparison. I love being mentioned in the kind of company Herschel kept. But his mom says, I've never even met Herschel Walker. Don't tell me my son is like Herschel Walker. <laughs> I tell you what, Herschel is a, is a wonderful human being. Though. Any comparisons to him, you've got to be uh, pretty appreciative of. He's something else. Odin, who's had such a great game, a little shaken up on that last play. And watch again for number one, Hastings coming in on the block. Good blocking up front by the offensive line, but this block by Hastings downfield was one of just, just enough to get the guy off balance and, uh, and clear out the area. First and goal, Georgia at the four. Hurst got one. Rodney Helton made the hit. That was the 10th play of this Georgia drive. And the nice thing about running freshmen up in there is that they're so young that Ray Goff doesn't have to worry about them getting tired. <laughs> they got plenty of energy. It's just like your kids at home, they never slow down. <laughs> to have a chance to somehow pull this off, Georgia needs two scores. First, they need seven. Second and goal at the Bama three. home in the back of the end zone. I tell you what happened. Uh, Garrison Hurst was going to try to come out on the route and get knocked down when he went through the line of scrimmage. And as a result, Preston Jones just unloads the football. But, you know, hey, I'm not going to take the loss. Just put it up in about the fifth row. A sea of red and black here between the hedges. The Bulldogs, who've been to 29 bowl games. And a good chunk of that under Vince Dooley, who's now athletic director. Ray Goff, who played and was an assistant under Dooley in his second year at the helm of the dogs. And watching his Bulldogs third and goal at the Bama three. And Preston Jones says, we're going to have to talk this thing over. This is too important. Five minutes and 58 seconds to play. Alabama trying to hold on for the win. Six minutes to play in Athens. Georgia trying to cut the Alabama lead. They've moved it 70 yards down to the Bama three-yard line. Larry Ware. Shown his wares all day long. Touchdown, Georgia. Yeah, we'll figure one of two things. Either going to try to run the toss or try to go to Hummings, their most experienced wide receiver, or some kind of a little pick play down in there, uh, real close to the uh, to the goal line. It ends up being Larry Ware. His third touchdown of the season. Folks, we told you earlier about Larry Ware and his perseverance having played behind all those fine uh, running backs here at the University of Georgia. Now it's kind of paying off for him. Georgia wants to go for two. Five minutes and 53 seconds. Ray Goff is not happy on the sideline. Larry Ware on this play now. You know, this is developing outside. A little toss play outside. Nothing spectacular, but nice running by Ware. I thought that, you know, if you get that close to the line of scrimmage, usually down on the goal line, things get a little, you know, messy up front. But the offensive line did a nice job of clearing the area out, and he did a nice job of finding a hole and just really exploding up there and getting into the end zone. So Georgia talking it over on the sideline. Preston Jones there, who's come in after Greg Talley started. Just led the Bulldogs on a 73-yard scoring march. Still plenty of time left with 5.53 to go, and I'm sure Georgia is thinking, we got to get it back and we have to score again. But they will go for two. Well, the thing they're thinking here is they can get two and they get the ball back and then come back, get a field goal, then they win the game by one if they can stop Alabama. Otherwise, if it came down to a field goal, the best they could play for is a tie. The dogs go for two. Cummings in motion. Ware wants to throw an option. Boom, the tight end. 
sweeps clear of the defense in the corner. Larry Ware, the junior tailback out of Montgomery, Alabama, has probably his best passing day of the year and of his career. Nice little, nice feathery touch in there, you know, for the guy from uh, Montgomery. And oh, what a lift that has given the Bulldogs because now they know if they can hold on defensively, a field goal would win it. Five minutes and 53 seconds to play between the hedges. Gene Stallings is that far away from his first win. The Georgia team, knowing their defense has got to hold and give the offense another chance, trailing 16-14 Alabama. 58th meeting between the Dogs and the Tide, and it is a beauty here in Athens. I keep thinking back to something that Greg Talley, the quarterback of Georgia, told us. He said, this is the reason why you come to the SEC and you play football here. But these kinds of games, having to come down to this kind of a situation, this is when it's exciting to be out there and be in uniform. John Casey's kick. Prince Wembley, no chance. Philip Doyle started things off. A long drive ends in an Alabama field goal. It was 3-0. John Casey, after Georgia recovered a fumble, tied it up. Then Alabama goes 80 yards, and Robert Jones goes airborne from one yard out. They're up 10-3. Casey adds a 19-yard field goal. 10-6, Alabama still in front. Then Alabama, another field goal from Philip Doyle. Stretch it to 13-6. He tacked on a long 47-yarder. And then Larry Ware from three yards out, and now we got a two-point game. Got maybe three. It looks like those Bulldogs are biting a little bit up front now. This is when the fans start the chant of whoop, whoop, sick them. And this is when you, if you're in the huddle and you're on the defense or the offense, you kind of look across the huddle and you start thinking about all the things you had to do. You worked so hard. This Georgia football team got up at 6 o'clock in the morning during the offseason, during their workouts together as a team without coaches. They wanted it to pay off now in the fourth quarter. Second and six, Alabama. Hollingsworth wants to throw the screen again to Turner. This time, Georgia has it red. Flag down. Penalty marker at the end of the play. Alabama. Georgia, should they decline it, would bring up third down and about 10. That clipping on the offense, the penalty is declined. Third down. You don't need a penalty flag when you're playing like this on defense. That's a stick there. That's saying hello to somebody. That's uh, Brian Gant making sure he puts his initials on somebody. Oh, it's going to get noisy now. with a return on on the punt. Carswell to the 45. Corey Evans, number 45, got the sack for the Bulldogs. You see him coming right down the gut of the offense right there. He gets blocked, but he's still crawling, and he grabs a hold of Hollingsworth's leg as he tries to make his move. scrimmage the Alabama 45 Georgia with 410 to play trailing by two a field goal wins it for them three wide receiver offense for Preston Jones Cummings in motion Hurst met head on if Mike Joy can hear me we're going down to the Georgia sideline Mike 
When Alabama had the ball, they told the Georgia offensive team, we will get you the ball back. Now, the Alabama defense looked like elephants to Greg Talley, but with Preston Jones engineering the Georgia drive, he's the guy with the sack of peanuts. <laughs> Second down and 10. Make it second down and 12, excuse me. Garrison Hurst will be the single setback. And again, three wideouts for Preston Jones. Blitz. Broken up. Mark McMillan, the nickelback, got a piece of that one. Intended for Kevin Maxwell. It is third down and 12. Oh, what a nice play by him, though. You see him just reach in here now. He's going to be on the right side of the screen. Watch him reach in. Good reaction to the pass. That's playing defense back there. Georgia needs 12 for the first down. They need at least that much to even give John Casey a chance to win it. Garrison Hurt. that guy MC Hammer when he says you know one thing you can't touch this right here oh that's nice two or three nice cuts at the 30 of Alabama clock stop 319 Larry Ware back in at tailback I doubt that he got a yard Steve Webb with the initial hit. And now Georgia, I think Dan Jiggins would be happy to use as much clock as possible and try to get about 10 more yards to give John Casey the chance to win it all. Well, right now, you know, they, they'd like to get another first, Brad. They'd like to get down there inside the 20. Now, if you can use another minute and a half, two minutes, then it puts uh, Alabama in a very difficult position to have them drive down the field and get the score. You can't afford a mistake here. Second and 10. Where? To the 21. It'll bring up third down and one. Larry Ware. Sullins made the hit. And it's fourth down. Here comes John Casey. A preseason All-American candidate, kicker, in his senior season. And he said, I knew I was a Georgia Bulldog in the 1987 Liberty Bowl when I hit the 39-yard field goal to beat Arkansas. If he hits this one, it might be enough to beat Alabama. Casey will attempt a 40-yarder here. You'll know in a minute if it's good.
Parker on the field. Near the 35-yard line. Ray Goff assumes this will be a penalty against Georgia. There was a little extracurricular activity in the middle of the field. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Oh, that one hurts. And as a coach now, this is the one thing you don't want. Ray Goff told us he's an excitable guy, and he's certainly excited over on that sideline. He said, if there's one thing I'd like to be more like Coach Dooley, I'd like to think before I act or speak. I tell you what, didn't take him long to say something there. <laughs> Alabama needs a field goal. They trail by one. Complete to the 41, Lorenzo Cole. What you do as a defense here is you try to make the offense burn their timeouts by making sure you contain the ball within the stripes. You don't let the receivers get out of bounds. You don't let the running backs get out of bounds and kill the clock. Hollinsworth, second down and three. He may keep it. Runs out on the far side. I think he's a little bit short of the first down. Alabama and Gene Stallings may be looking at 0-3. That was the year I was born, and I got quite a bit of gray hair. That's a long time ago. The last time Alabama and Georgia played here, Mike Shula led a long touchdown drive and got a pass to Al Bell as Alabama came from behind and hushed 82,000. Gary Hollinsworth trying to do the same thing. It's complete to Russell, and that's a first down Alabama. And that time you saw the receivers come back to the quarterback. They recognized he was in a scramble situation and worked back to him and got open. Hollinsworth can gather his thoughts as he goes to the sideline. His number's on the day. Now keep in mind, too, I mean, he's got about 50 yards to go, and he's got just under a minute. He's got 59 seconds to do it in. And all Alabama needs here is a field goal to win the football game. Ray Goff saying, I'm a little more calm now, but I tell you what, I didn't enjoy that penalty on the kickoff. <laughs> Remember, instead of Alabama starting at the 20, the personal foul penalty brought it out to the 35 and gave them a little more room to work. a first down right near the midfield strike. Don't forget the NFL today on CBS gets our doubleheader going tomorrow. Minnesota and Chicago, the key game, Dallas and Washington, Phoenix and New Orleans. What's wrong with the Eagles? They're 0-2. They're in Los Angeles against the Rams, Atlanta and San Francisco. That's our doubleheader. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. They don't come much better than this one. First and 10, Alabama. Incomplete. Intended for Lorenzo Cole. Two timeouts left for Alabama. Georgia only cares about their timeout if they have to get the ball back should Alabama score. The Tide only needs a field goal. Hollinsworth. Incomplete again. Time Georgia decides to play a little man defense, send the outside linebacker on a blitz. And it worked to flush uh, Hollinsworth out of the pocket. It was... Uh, Greg Jackson, number 54, that came on the blitz in uh, Mo Lewis. It's third and ten, Alabama. They've got two plays you can bet to pick up the first down. From the shotgun.
left for Alabama. 45 seconds to go. Only 10 yards, but it might as well be an early season right now for Alabama. They need this first down real big. Gene Stallings wants a timeout. I don't think his players see him. Here comes a blitz. Wait a minute. Penalty marker down in the defensive secondary. And the Georgia players are indicating that it is against Alabama. Dead ball foul. Delay a game. Those of you joining us who've been watching the San Diego State BYU ball game. We're in Athens, Georgia, between the hedges at Sanford Stadium. This ball game's come down to a fourth and 15 Alabama. They trail 17 to 16. Intercepted. for Georgia again. He came up with a play of the year there. We've got a player down on the field. I'm not sure if it's Lamont Russell, a young man who was going out on the uh, reception. It's uh, number 32. That is Prince Wembley. What happened on the play, though, is uh, Gary Collinsworth tried to go to his key guy, and that's Lamont Russell, number 81. And it's just simply great coverage back there by the defense of uh, the defensive secondary of Georgia. Watch Carswell step right in front of this like he is the receiver, picks it off, and he knows that he's sewn this ball game up for his club. Get down, don't fumble the ball, let the whistle be blown. Here's the isolation. Now watch 81. That's Lamont Russell. He's going to be the go-to guy in this case. And watch Carswell react to it. Coming off Prince Wembley. And Wembley got his head snapped right there. You saw it as he was going up to try to slap the ball down. They help Prince Wembley to his feet, and he is wobbly. Chuck Carswell, elated. There he is. What's up, Steve? What's up, Chris Hill? What's up, Matt Austin? I love you, Art. I love you, David. Go, go! He had a whole laundry list, didn't he? <laughs> and unfortunately, here comes uh, Prince Wembley over to the Georgia sideline. On the return, there was a dead ball foul, and that backs things up to the 24-yard line. Ray Goff looking for his dogs to go to two and one, and they are on their way to that. As we're down under a half minute. And though you feel happy for Ray Goff, what must be going on inside Gene Stallings? Because his team was leading the whole ball game, controlling the football on the ground, time of possession, running the football extremely well, and then you come down to the end of the ball game, and all of a sudden, Georgia gets back in this thing on a long drive. They go for two, and they make it. And now they come back. They get the field goal to go ahead, and they stop Alabama on the key drive with almost no time left on the clock. Alabama fans so hopeful that Gene Stallings would bring back the winning legacy of Bear Bryant. Instead of bear-like, it's going to be unbearable. They'll be 0-3. Gary Hollingsworth really didn't make any mistakes all day until this play. And this really is a mistake. You know, the receivers are awfully close together. Gary Hollingsworth recognizes he's got to get the first down. Critical situation. What you see right there is the two receivers close into one another. They were very close. Hollingsworth simply trying to thread it. Preston Jones to one knee. And Alabama will use its final timeout. It's going to be... A happy anniversary for Jim Buck and Betty Goff, their baby boy. Actually, he's got a little brother. I shouldn't say baby boy. 
The 40th anniversary party will be a happy one. The trip back to Tuscaloosa will not be. Between 1971 and 1981, Alabama lost four SEC games that entire 10-year period. They're about to go to 0-3. There's always that transition. Whenever you bring in new coaches, you're going to have those transition seasons. And I think that the fans and the people of Alabama have to look at it that way. There's going to be a transition time right now for the University of Alabama's football team. It's not that it's not, they're not doing the right things. It just simply takes some time to make the changes that are necessary to get the program where Gene Stalling wants it. And Gene Stallings is such a class gentleman. And young Ray Goff at age 35 is about to pick up one of the biggest wins in his two-year stay in Athens.